Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can spawn enemies into your game by touching a part. So right here is the part that I'm going to touch to spawn the enemies. And then in the background here on this red part is where the enemies are going to spawn. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm going to have my player touch this part here. And we can see that an enemy has formed in the background. All right, so let's see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Okay, in this project, I created two different parts. The first one here is the one that the player is going to touch to spawn the enemy. And the one in the background here is where the enemies are going to spawn to. You don't have to use this part if you don't want to. You can always set the position manually. Okay, so after you have those two parts, if that's what you're going to do, we're going to add two folders. The first folder is going to be under the workspace, and I named this folder enemies. The other folder we're going to put under server storage, and we're also going to call that one enemies as well. Next, we're going to grab whatever enemy that you want to use, and in this case, I just used the drooling zombie. So if you want to do the same thing, you can just add that into the game. And then if it spawns in the workspace, then you can just click and drag it into your enemies folder. After that, we're going to be adding a script onto this part here. So go ahead and find it in the Explorer menu, click on the plus sign, and click on Script. The first thing we're going to do is create a reference for this part. So we're going to say local part is equal to script dot parent. After that, we're going to create a reference for the other part in the game, which is our spawn location over here. To do that, we'll say local spawn zone. And this is going to be equal to game dot workspace dot spawn. So I named this part in the background spawn here. So if you have a different name for it, then make sure you update that right here. After that, we're going to create a variable for the server storage. So we'll say local server storage. And this is going to be equal to game colon get service. And inside the parentheses, we're going to put server storage. And since this is a variable name, if you want to shorten this to something smaller, you can. I just write out the whole thing to try to make everything as clear as possible. But if you don't want to do that for your script, you're welcome to choose a smaller variable name. After that, we're going to create one more variable. So we're going to say local can spawn. And this is going to be equal to true. And we're going to be changing this between true and false to control when the zombies can spawn. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to define a function. So we'll say local function. The name of our function will be spawn zombie. Inside the parentheses, we're going to pass other part. Inside our function, the first thing we're going to do is say local humanoid. And this is going to be equal to other part. So this is whatever other part touches this part right here. So we'll say other part dot parent. And then we'll do colon find first child which is a inside the parentheses we're going to put humanoid so what this line is doing right here is we're making sure whatever other object touches our part over here so whatever object touches this part right here we're making sure that that object has a humanoid part one additional thing we have to check for is to make sure that that humanoid object is actually a player because if we look under our zombie model the zombie also has a humanoid part, and if the zombie touches the part right here, then it could also spawn another zombie. So what we're going to do is once we know that the object has a humanoid part, we're going to check to make sure it's a player as well. To do that, we're going to say local player is going to be equal to game dot players colon find first child, and then we're going to say other part dot parent. So other part dot parent will be the player's model. And then we'll say dot name to get the name of the player. So what we're doing is we're getting the object's name to make sure it appears in the players list. Next, what we want to do is we want to say if humanoid. So if the object has a humanoid part and that object is a player and can spawn is true, then what we're going to do in that case is we're going to say can spawn is equal to false. This stops the zombies from spawning over and over again, and they won't be able to spawn until we set can spawn back to true. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to take a copy of the zombie that's stored in server storage and place it into the workspace. To do that, we're going to start by saying local zombie. And we're going to set this equal to server storage 
dot enemies. So we're starting with the server storage, and now we're looking under the enemies folder. And then under the enemies folder, we're going to be looking for our model. In our case, it's called Drooling Zombies. Okay, and what we're going to do with that is we're going to say colon and then clone. And this creates a copy of that object. And then after that, we're going to say zombie dot parent. And this is going to be equal to game dot workspace dot enemies. So now we're sticking it in the other folder that's under workspace. Then we're going to say zombie dot humanoid root part dot C frame. And we're going to set this equal to C frame dot new. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to say spawn zone, which is our red part in the background. And from the spawn zone, we need to get its position. So we'll say dot position. Then we're going to wait three seconds. And after three seconds, we're going to say can spawn is equal to true. Then down at the bottom here, we're going to say part dot touched colon connect and then the name of the function we want to connect is spawn zombie alright so let's go ahead and run the game and make sure we didn't make any mistakes okay so I'm gonna have my player touch the part and we'll see what happens okay I see that nothing happens the first thing I'm gonna do is check under output to see if there was any errors and I see that there was an error that pops up and if I click on that error it shows me where the error is and I see that I made a spelling mistake Okay, so let's go ahead and run the game again and see if that fixes it. All right, so let's have the player touch the part. Okay, another error, so let's take a look. Okay, and if we compare this to the name of the model, we can see that I added an extra S. So let's go ahead and delete that. Let's go ahead and try this again. So now I see if my player touches the part, a zombie appears. Okay, and we see that the first one did fine, but this one looks like he's stuck. So what we can do is we can tell the zombies to spawn a little bit above the part. So let's go ahead and head back to the script. And to do that, what we're going to do is next to spawn zone dot position, we're going to say plus and then vector three dot new. And then we're going to say zero. We're going to increase the y by five and then zero for that part. So what this is doing, it's taking the original part's position and adding a little bit to the y position so that it spawns a little bit above the part. Okay, let's take another look. So now if my player touches this part here, you can see the zombie spawns a little bit above the part and doesn't get stuck. And one more thing we'll add before we end with this video is we probably don't want an infinite number of zombies that can appear in our game. So let's set a limit on how many zombies can appear in the game. To do that, under the player variable, we're going to define another variable. So we'll say local and then enemy num. And this is going to be equal to game.workspace.enemies. So we're talking about the enemies folder that is in the workspace. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to say colon and then get children. So what this is doing right here, it's getting all the items that are stored in the enemies folder. And it's going to store that as a table under enemy num. And then what we can do with that is we can check the size of the table, which will be like how many items are in that table. And then we can set a limit on how many items spawn in the game. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say number sign and then the name of the variable. So this stands for the length of the table, which is how many items are in there. And then we could say if that is less than whatever limit we want to do. So let's say we only want to spawn five zombies. We can do that. And then right here, we just need to put another and. So what this statement is checking is checking to make sure the object has a humanoid part. It's making sure that it's a player that can spawn is equal to true. And that the number of enemies that are stored in the enemies folder is less than five. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this now with the new addition. All right, so let's have the player touch the part. And every time a zombie comes into the game, if we look under workspace and then the enemies folder, we can see it appears in that folder here. And then if another one spawns, now I have two. And I'll try to get five in here without dying. So right now we're at three. So this is number four. Okay, and now we have five zombies in that list here. And if I try to spawn another one, then nothing happens. It's because we're checking to make sure that the number of items in that folder here is less than 5. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and stay tuned for the next one.